first and foremost, congratulations Corinne Lee on 30 days of sobriety. But in this video, we're gonna be asking, is Corinne Lee an alcoholic? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being or maybe help someone you know. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And before we jump into the topic, two quick announcements. This video is posted at 7 a.m. Saturday, February 23rd, and at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be doing my charity live stream to help support Project Beauty Share, which is what that Taylor is doing her 15 days of foundation on. So come join the live stream. I will be doing my makeup, answering questions, and all money that we raise will be going straight to Project Beauty Share, and it's gonna be wonderful. But the second thing is, since we're going to be talking about addiction, alcoholism, and all that stuff, don't forget, over on my website, uh, the Science of Addiction course is now 100% free. Go check it out. Learn, educate yourself more about the disease of addiction, whether you're somebody in active addiction, in recovery, you have a loved one, or just simply share it and help educate more people about addiction so we can help end the stigma and help even more people, all right? But anyways, so yeah, Corinne Lee, she just uploaded a video about how she was sober for 30 days. Now, I was unfamiliar with Threadbanger and Corinne and all that stuff. My beautiful girlfriend Tristan recently introduced me to their channel. Absolutely love it. But my Twitter started blowing up and people were asking about, you know, Corinne Lee, hey, hey, you should make a video on this. So Tristan and I, you know, we're just chilling on a Friday night and we decided to watch it. So I checked it out and I just wanna, you know, kind of break, uh, break it down a little bit and I want to talk about different parts. So in some parts, I might be talking to Corinne. If you ever watch this, girl, I'll be, I'm gonna be talking to you. Or I'm gonna be talking to you, the audience, if you can relate to Corinne. Or I'm gonna be talking to you, the audience, if you know somebody who is like Corinne. All right, so let's get started. Probably doesn't sound like a lot to most of you, but I think the longest I've gone without drinking since high school was maybe two weeks. And that's not a long time. I'll be 38 years old at the end of January, and I feel like I really need to get my shit together. All right, so first and foremost, like, yeah, she talks about drinking as well as smoking for years, right? And later on in the video, she talks about how, I think it was around day 12, that's, you know, she's only been sober that long, you know, like two or three times in her entire life. And girl, I can definitely relate to that. And by the way, if I f forgot to mention it earlier, I am a drug addict and alcoholic in recovery. I've been clean since my 27th birthday in June of 2012, all right? But yeah, there, there are different reasons why people decide to sober up. And by the end of this video, I'll be talking about how addiction is kind of like on a spectrum, okay? But, you know, the new year is always a great time to start. And when I first saw her start to, you know, do this, I'm like, girl, you got a journey ahead of you. Cause she talked about some of the things, you know, you know, birthday, concert, all sorts of stuff. And it's like, whoo, 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 that's a lot to stay sober through. And I've dabbled throughout the years with meditation and trying to start a regular practice, but never fully committed myself. And I'm thinking this would be a good time to maybe try to do that. Oh, I can't even tell you how excited I got when Corinne uh, said she was gonna start meditating. And and I, I'm gonna be completely honest. I mean, girl, I thought you were gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, Audible, and, you know, that's the only reason why you plugged it, but <laughs> this part right here. So there's a theme that keeps presenting itself to me over and over and over again, and that is the theme of meditation. Now, I learned about meditation many, many years ago from a Buddhist monk named Tana Hang. Definitely saying his name wrong, and I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Tik Nhat Han. all right? And I'm so glad she mentioned him. He is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite meditation teachers. He has so many books that are just amazing. Some of them are not you know, on Audible, and you can only get the regular copy, like the uh, the paper copy or the uh, the Kindle copy. And yeah, I absolutely love it. Like, I think the first book I read of his, a short one was called The Miracle of Mindfulness. I highly recommend that one. I know that one's on Audible, but like, 
he covers so many different topics. You saw Corinne kind of scrolling through it. Um, everything from fear to anger, you know, to all sorts of things. And I absolutely love this dude. One of my favorite books, if any of you are like trying to diet or lose weight like I am, um, when I started my weight loss journey about a year ago or so, uh, maybe a little longer. There's a book that he wrote with a doctor and it's called Savor. So there's a lot of science in there as well as different mindfulness techniques for losing weight. So I highly recommend that book Savor as well. Um, I'll link down below some of these books by him. Absolutely phenomenal. And I'm so glad that Corinne decided, uh, decided to start meditating and she actually surprised me a little bit later in this video. So I picked up the camera right now because I'm experiencing a little anxiety. Rob went to the store to pick up some things for a project that he's doing and it just like freaks me out. It's gonna make me cry. I'm just always so afraid that something bad's gonna happen. So I try to prepare myself for the worst and it really sucks to live like that. I'm hoping I can find some coping mechanisms um, so I don't have those negative thoughts all the time. Because right now I'm just afraid Rob is never gonna come home. Are these normal feelings that people have? I don't know. Why does my mind always go to the dark side? I'm gonna try not to think about negative things. I'm gonna go work out, do some yoga and meditation, and hopefully that makes me feel better. All right, so right there, right there. So when she was talking about like the anxiety around Rob never coming home, this is, this is very common, okay? Like Corinne was talking about her anxiety um, for me after her mother unfortunately passed away. And this is something that can happen. It can trigger anxiety. Like some, like even though Corinne later talks about her trauma and I'm gonna touch on that in a second, like trauma is different for everybody. And especially when it comes to grief, like losing someone like that close to you, especially like, you know, your mother, like this can cause a trauma and trauma triggers anxiety, all right? So like, her fear of Rob not coming home, like it's very, very, you know, realistic for anybody who struggles with anxiety. Now, as she was talking about that and she was like, do normal people think this and these thoughts and da 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 And I was like, girl, you better start meditating. And then she said, she's like, she's gonna go do some yoga and go meditate. Yes, 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 yes. So meditation is not about stopping your thoughts. It's about noticing your thoughts. It's about noticing the wacky places that our brain goes and catching it. And with meditation, depending on what type you're doing, you have an anchor. By the way, all of you need to go, like if you wanna get into mindfulness meditation, just start doing yoga. Yoga is like moving meditation. And by the way, um, the channel that Corinne mentioned, uh, Yoga with Adrian. Uh, that's the channel I actually was doing yoga with. I, I did like a month or two of yoga and I might get back into it. I should get back into it. Like there was a lot of stuff that I could do. Like I was afraid to do yoga as a heavyweight guy, but like there was actually a ton of stuff that I could do. And there was like a bunch of different positions and all that. But anyways, get into yoga. Why don't I do more videos on yoga? You need to remind me to do more videos on yoga. Not you, Corinne, but my audience. Y'all need to remind me to do some more videos on yoga. The point is, is that prior to today, I probably would not watch this R. Kelly documentary because I myself experienced sexual abuse in high school at the hands of someone I trusted, a relative. And I really believe that was the catalyst for me to take on drinking as an almost everyday hobby. That right there is something so, so, so relatable to so, so many people, okay? So Corinne was talking about the abuse she suffered from um, as a teenager, and this is what started to lead to self-medication, all right? And the reason this can develop into an addiction is because we're trying to get rid of those feelings. There's three reasons people drink or use drugs, okay? Just three. We think there's a million, but there's just three. To get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. So, like right there, it could have been a combination of the two, if I were to guess, like to get rid of a feeling or to have an escape. And what happens is we start rewiring our brain. So whenever we have those thoughts, those memories, those feelings, whatever they are, and we turn to substances, our brain immediately connects that. It grooves into our neural pathways and it's like, okay, anytime you're feeling like that, turn to alcohol or drugs. And the longer you do this, more consistently that you do this, it turns into an autopilot. Like for many people who struggle with addiction of drugs or alcohol, 
they they don't even think about it like a lot of people like like i know me personally like i didn't want to drink i didn't want to use it wasn't even like having the same effect on me but i just kept doing it anyways because it was just so habitual i trained my brain to turn to substances for a wide range of triggers it's the first time in a really long time that i haven't been self-medicating all day with marijuana the alcohol really seems like it was the easier of the two to stop doing daily boom right there okay so those of you who know my channel i am pro weed Okay, if you wanna smoke weed, do your thing, baby. Like, even though I don't smoke and, you know, I'm 100% sober, no, no alcohol, no drugs or anything, I'm pro marijuana. Like, I voted to have it passed for recreational use here in the state of Nevada. And like, you know, it, it's great for medicinal reasons. And, you know, it's, it's actually less harmful than alcohol. But I do wanna point out that it is addictive. So what Corinna is talking about is that she's recognizing that it was, it's harder to live without weed than it is to live without alcohol, okay? It's a psychological addiction, okay? So like, although like weed can be very beneficial to people for medical reasons, or you just wanna chill, relax or whatever, safer than alcohol, but you can develop a psychological addiction, okay? Like some people are like, oh, it's not a drug, it's a plant. Like, listen very carefully. If you can come become addicted to gambling, food, shopping, like you can become addicted to weed, <laughs> okay? So on day 13, like Corinne is seeing the psychological dependence and where those cravings are coming from because she's so used to smoking. Just shake the rump. Hmm, well, I'm starting to lose track of how many days it's been, so I feel like that's a good sign. So on day 17, Corinne is like, oh, I don't even like, what day is it, da, da, da. Well, stop, all of you stop right there. Doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're trying to quit alcohol, drugs, uh, a poor habit or whatever, take out your phone, okay? I'm not gonna tell you which one, there's a million of them, just go to your app store or the Google Play Store, or whatever the heck your phone uses, and just type in sobriety counter or clean time counter or whatever it is, there are a million of them. So I actually use one on my phone, um, it's part of a 12 step program, but anyways, anyways, I have 6.66 years sober, 79.96 months, 2,436 days, which equates to 58,461 hours sober, all right? You can get it on your freaking phone, okay? This way you never lose track, just put it on your phone, okay? This is actually a very special day because it is the start of Aquarius season. There is a full blood wolf moon tonight, and we're going to a concert, which will definitely test our resolve for staying sober. I think I've been to maybe one concert where I didn't drink alcohol. Yeah. Oh, I got nervous right there. Corinne, I got nervous for you right there. Like going to a concert like sober and staying sober, congratulations, that is a huge one. All right, and I think there's two takeaways we could take from this, right? One of the biggest fears that people have when getting sober is like, it's not gonna be fun, I can't do anything fun, da 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 like. You're, you're crazy. I do everything that I used to do. You know, I, I love going to shows. In a month or two, I'm gonna go see uh, Taking Back Sunday with some of my buddies and things like that. I live in Las Vegas, okay? Like, I do a ton, a ton of fun things while being 100% sober. It took me a while to learn how to do that, but I did, okay? So first thing, huge myth is that you can't have fun sober. Corinne is living proof, I'm living proof. Millions of other people are living proof. The second thing is, it is difficult, especially in early sobriety. I think I went to my first concert when I had about four months sober. I came back to Las Vegas, real quick story time. I came back to Las Vegas to visit my son and there was actually a show, I think it was, yeah, it was Newfound Glory. And me and my buddy were gonna go, one of my best friends I grew up with. And right before the concert, which was at a bar, we were playing some video poker and I won a thousand dollars, okay? So I was in Las Vegas, Nevada, where all my dealers are, there's alcohol everywhere, right? And I won a thousand dollars and then we were going to a concert at a bar and oh my God, it was just the most difficult thing, right? And it was because I was still early in sobriety. Now it's like, I, you know, that doesn't really matter to me. But anyways, like some people say you gotta stay sober a day at a time. like. 
that night, I was staying sober like one minute at a time, all right? I was just like, okay, Chris, just pay attention to the band, pay attention to the band, just pay attention to the band, all right? So it was very difficult, it was a test that I pass what i ended up doing to get rid of that money so i quit getting crazy thoughts was it was in like november so i ended up just buying my son a bunch of christmas presents there was a moment when i was at the retreat i was back in my hotel room and i was putting moisturizer on my face and looking in the mirror and i realized how much i look like my mom i had this feeling that she would be proud of me and it made me smile and it made me happy instead of sad, which is usually how I feel when I think about her. And it felt like a breakthrough. I love, I love, and Corinne, if you're watching this, I love how you touched on that right there and part of that process of dealing with grief. And like she was saying, like, we never 100% get over loss. Like I have lost so, 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 so many people in my life, but, Corinne had some clarity because she wasn't, you know, using substances to cope. And she was thinking about how proud her mother would be. And absolutely, that is something that, that just brings joy to my life on a daily basis, especially when I start to get down. And I think people who I've lost, I've lost one of my best friends. I've lost other friends. I've lost, you know, clients. I've lost people in recovery. I've lost so many people, right? And when I look, and like, you guys know, so those of you who follow my channel, my channel's been going through some, this is what I'm going through some stuff lately. And I remember driving home the other night and I was just thinking about how, you know, one of my best friends who passed away, I'm like, you know, she would be really proud of what I'm doing right now, right? And that's a great way to reframe your grief. But not only that, but it's also a great way to kind of like live on the right track. Like, you know, um, something that I do, like my grandma, like, I, she was the most important person in my life and she passed away a few years ago. And something that I asked myself is like, would I be honoring her memory if I took this action? You know what I mean? Like, what would she want me to do in this situation? So there's a lot of ways that we can honor somebody's memory and also, you know, ask ourselves, would they be proud of what I'm doing and who I've become? You know what I mean? And it kind of keeps us on the right track. That is just one of the ways that I deal with grief personally. So again, Corinne, super, super, super proud of you for 30 days sober and at the end of the video corinne asked like if we have any questions or anything like that my question is did you stay sober did you stay stopped drinking smoking weed like i was surprised i was like wait you're not even gonna you're like what that's what we all want to know because she like uh uploaded it like 23 days after you know uh the 30 days or whatever so corinne if you see that video or this video, that's my question for you. Now lastly, the question, the title of this video, is Corinne an alcoholic or an addict? I don't know, I don't freaking know. What do you think I am? What do you think I do here on The Rewired Soul? You think I'm over here diagnosing people? You must be crazy. Um, but anyways, what I would say is addiction is on a spectrum. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know, like I was uh, just, you know, just my observations, you know, and assumptions. It didn't look like Corinne was like experiencing withdrawal or she didn't really talk about it. Like alcohol can have some pretty wicked withdrawal symptoms. And like, she was pretty cheery, you know, like during that first week, there could be a lot. Like I've made videos about my alcohol withdrawal, not only like the aches and pains and the puking and stuff, but like I had hallucinations and you can have seizures if you're not, uh, you know, going through like a medical detox and stuff like that. But anyways, there is a spectrum of addiction. There's like severe, moderate, like, you know, and then there's just like, kind of like, you're in the abuse territory. So I don't know, you know, but that's something for her to find out. The last thing I will say, Corinne, if you are watching this video and if sobriety is still your thing and anybody out there who's into meditation, sobriety and all that, I cannot recommend enough um, an alternative to 12 step programs. It's called Refuge Recovery and it's based around Buddhist philosophy, not Buddhist religion, Buddhist philosophy. So rather than 12 steps, they follow the um, Eightfold Path and the Four Noble Truths absolutely phenomenal meetings typically start with a meditation and there is a book too called refuge recovery um you could download it you could buy it you can get it on you know uh audible all that stuff so go check that out if that's something you're interested in working with a lot of clients who are resistant to 12-step programs but they're kind of like interested in meditation or even like 
Buddhist philosophy and stuff, like I am, I'm a big nerd about that stuff. Like Refuge Recovery is an excellent, excellent, excellent option. All right, but anyways, if any of you have been sober for 30 days ever in your life, let me know down in the comments, how'd you do it? How did you do it? Let's share that with some other people so maybe they can do it too. All right, don't forget, charity live stream, 10 a.m. today, February 23rd, 10 a.m. PST, all right? And I will be doing my makeup, answering questions, and we're going to be raising money for Project Beauty Share, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get some exclusive perks, exclusive videos, all sorts of stuff, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. Congratulations, Corinne, and we'll see you next time.